is something none of us can avoid. However, parents never expect their children to die before them. My next guest suffered a terrible blow when he lost all three of his kids in a tragic accident and then lost the love of his life, his wife. Um, welcome, uh, Dr. Um, Adam Mohammed, who is the co-author of Journey into the Unknown. You know, for a minute there, Doctor, I, I closed my eyes because I, I went through in my head this book and I, I read it into the early hours of this morning and I just couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop crying because how does one who hasn't experienced something as tragic as you have experienced, the loss of your three children, then a few years later, the loss of the love of your life. I mean, you can't even put it into words. Yes. At the time when we lost our children in 1986, we went to see my mum and them. I'm, I'm originally from Balfour. I've, uh, I, I've settled in Durban. We went to see my mum. She was not well, and we were coming back. We went Saturday. We were coming back on Sunday. Nur Jahan, that is my wife, was driving, and I was in the seat next door, you know. And between Stanerton and Fortress, we had next, and there was no car. The par tire burst. She lost control, and we lost three children. Shamima was no, uh, 12, Umera was 9, and Nadia was 6. I was sleeping at the time, actually. When they pulled me out of the car, there's lots of people. There was lots of commotion when I got up. Mm. And they pulled me and they put me on the side of the road. And there was an Afrikaner lady, and she, she was a nurse, and she said, you be careful because you've broken your back. So they put me next door, and a few minutes later, they brought my eldest daughter, Shamima. And uh, she said, says, well, I understood what she said. She's gone. But it didn't register, really, you know. Mm. I, I think my mind refused to register what had happened. Mm. Uh, it was like I was out of my body, you know, and looking down and seeing what's happening. I couldn't cry at the time. I suppose it's, 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 it's the brain's way of preserving our mind. And my other two daughters were taken by some good people out to Stanerton Hospital. And when the ambulance came, Nur Jahan, myself, and Shamima that had passed away went to Fort Cross Hospital. We got a message half an hour later that Nadia, the youngest one, six, had passed away. And then half an hour later, Humera was taken to Stanerton, uh, to Joburg, and she passed away on the way. So, well, really, you know, for us it was, that's the end of the world, really, you know. We don't, yeah. we were angry with God, but we were angry for taking them along, but we were even angrier for not taking us along. Mm. We said, why do you here for what? What's our purpose? What's the reason we're here for? Mm. So it was a very difficult time. It was a very traumatic time. I was then taken to Standard and uh, to Johannesburg Hospital to recuperate. And uh, we went down for the funeral, I remember, and you know, they took me in the trench and I just saw these three young ladies lying there. On the in fact, you, you say in the book, and I was taken into the room where my beloved daughters were ready for the final rites. There they were, my three girls, my world, my future, my dream. Gone now forever. All I wanted to do was hug them, plant a tiny kiss on their foreheads, caress their cheeks with my fingers, but it was not to be. It is forbidden to us to make an overt display of emotions. And because I was on a stretcher, it decided that I could not go to the graveyard. As a result, I lost out on that final goodbye and the sense of closure. That's true. That's true, I lost out. And, and one of the problems with these tragedies is when we went back home to Durban, after two or three months, I realized our marriage took a beating. Mm. And this normally happens, really, you know, in all tragedies. Mm. It, it took us at least two to three years to come to terms with it. I think what, what helped us to a great extent is, I think one of the beliefs, I'm not very religious, I'm spiritual, I believe in all mm. religions, really. You know. I think what really helped us was 
believing. And especially for Nur Jahan, we believed so it was possible to shift responsibility and share with the Almighty, the Creator, our burden, really, mm. you know, and tell him, mm. you have now given this to us, you help us out. I think mm. that was one of the main things that we did. Mm. The other thing that we did is we went to Compassionate Friends. Mm. They're mm. a wonderful group. And I think after six months to a year, your friends decide that it's time now you got over it, really, you know, mm. because, mm. hey, it's a long time. We can't keep on hearing this. So you go to Compassionate Friends. You can scream, you can shout, you can mm. do whatever you mm. feel like. You can be you, really. Mm. You know, you don't mm. have to put on facades. Mm. We don't have to put on masks. Mm. We do that for society. Mm. But for us, we need to cry, really, you know. Mm. When was the first time you cried, Doc? Oh, I think when I got at the funeral, mm. at the funeral, because I was dissociated within myself, really. You know, there was no... It was like a dream, mm. uh, you mm. know. I suppose it's denial, really. You say, look, it's really it hasn't happened. Mm. But when I saw them lying there, yes. Uh, you cry, but you feel, okay, there's too many people to cry, really. You know, we're brought up by society, you know, by our culture to not to cry as men. Mm. Mm. And so at that time, and then, of course, I went to hospital, Nujan went to a mom's place. So it became even lonelier for both of us. Mm. Mm. And, and you drifted apart as well. Oh, we drifted out very much, you know. I think, I think she more so, because the Saturday we left for Durban, she had an instinct, really. She had a gut feeling. She said, we shouldn't take the daughter so long, because I think something is going to happen. Really? I said, nothing can happen, really. She had a premonition. She used to be a little psychic sometimes. She could yeah. sort of, you know. Yeah. And I said, nothing can happen. What will happen? And then, strangely enough, that afternoon, Saturday afternoon, we got to near Ladysmith and the car broke down. And she says, see my premonition. I said, you know, you women always have premonitions, really. Mm. And so, yes, I blamed myself. She Did blamed you? me too, really, <gasps> you see. And she said, oh, you are I responsible. Do. But you are oh. responsible for giving me to drive as well. Oh, my I think goodness. it was a blaming game, really, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that of course, inevitably happens. It always is what if it didn't go, yeah. what, you yeah. know, the ifs are always there, you yeah. know. We, we tend to sort of bargain and say if we didn't do that. But, yeah. you know, we know for a fact deep down inside that, no, you know, that this, this has happened. It's water under the bridge, unfortunately. There's nothing you can... Mm you know, recoup from, 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 from the past, really. Mm. I buried my life, my dreams, my expectations, my lover, my friend, my wife, my teacher, my companion on the 10th of December, 2005. With her, I buried my future, my hopes, and my dreams. Life today has become an enemy and death, my friend. Yes. Uh, 2005, December, I was at the surgery. Nu Jahan, that is my wife, phoned me and she said, you know, do you have time? I said, I've got a patient on the chair, but I'll phone you. I phoned her about 10 minutes later and she was engaged, so I thought she may be speaking to one of my sisters. She did mm. that on a usual basis. I get, got back home and I was in a good mood because we were leaving next week for Thailand, really, mm. you know. So I got back home and I was shouting. I couldn't do, there was no... Uh, response. I walked in there and I saw her lying there. She lies lying in a prostate position. Very rare did I ever see her in that position. And of course when I went there I shook her. There was nothing. When I felt the pulse I knew she had gone then. And then my housekeeper Jabo had gone out for shopping because you know it was Christmas time. She's got two mm -hmm. little girls. So when she came she asked me and she screamed like a mad woman when she walked in. I thought it can't happen again, really. Mm. It's not possible. But when I, I think when I, when I, when we, we, we decided to bury her in Balfour next to her three daughters. And when we went to Balfour, when I buried her, I thought that's my life, really. I've fallen off the cliff. Now I've mm. really fallen off the cliff. You think of suicide, really. But, you know, you always think that, you know, 
what if you're not successful, you know? Oh. Then you have a problem. If you're successful, that's fine, you're gone, really. But I think we have a lot of inner resources as human beings. You know, that's why they do the, these this rites of passage, you mm. know, mm. when from boy to man. And I think we tend to use those resources. And what we found very much is we lived, we started then, Nujan and myself started living for the day. We didn't think in terms of five-year, ten-year plans, mm. really. You know, we started living for the day. And we realized that if we were immortal, that's fine. Then we could do something. But we are mortal people. We all have a time period, time span in mm. this lifetime. And if we're not going to live our lives, then we are postponing life. And we cannot afford to postpone life, mm. really. Mm. And we knew the fragility of life. Mm. We realized that from our experiences. Mm. So I think we got to a stage where we, we, our marriage was better than it was previous, mm. you know, after the daughters passed away a couple of years later. I started treating her differently. Because, you know, as patriarchal society, we are brought up with the idea that you are the boss. Mm. Mm. And suddenly I realized I'm not the boss, really. We, have, we are two dreamers that have come into a dream in a marriage. And so we have two different dreams, you know. Men are head orientated, women are, are heart orientated. Mm. We have to respect a dream, really, you yeah. know. And yeah. I decided I have to respect the dream. I gave her enough space, really. Mm. I let her be her, mm. you know. And I think it's just giving that space for happiness to enter. And I think that that worked very well. Mm. And I think this is, the message is, you know, we have to compromise. You know, it's, it's a, marriage is, is really a partnership, really, mm. you know. And mm. it's not, I'm, I'm the man and you're the woman, so I boss really, you know. And that's what I found. Mm. So there's a lot of things I found after the tragedy. There's a lot of things we uncovered and discovered and we, d we discovered each other. Really, mm. you know. And you must miss her terribly. Oh, I miss her terribly. But it was beautiful, the discovery, really. It was some <laughs> we, we looked at each other, with each other with different lenses. Mm. You know, mm. Suddenly it's like taking your cat track out and seeing this gorgeous. So Where can we wonderful. get the book, the Journey book is, uh, into the Unknown? Well, most places, you know, at the exclusive bookstores, mm -hmm. uh, ST Publishers, also available in Lens at the Islamic Channel Bookshop. But I've got some books to give away, five books, but also all uh, the, the, the hospices and compassionate friends, mm. if they write into us, I've already spoken to them. We are willing to give free books to all Fantastic. the chapters. Who Fantastic. Uh, I think they and they'll just this. email us they, they, if they, they email you, and then, and then we'll, 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 we'll send it, it through to, to these people. Doctor, and, uh, like I said, I spent, um, I read this book into the early hours of this morning, and there's so much that I learned from it. Um, your, your struggles, your, your trials, your tribulations, standing up again. And, and it helped me through a lot of things as well. Thank you very much Thank for you. joining us. Thank, Thank you, you very much. If you're struggling to make sense of your trauma and need advice, call us on 86 You can also tweet me, Nolene3Talk. In his book, Dr. Mohammed says, time heals all pain and life can be meaningful again. It could take years, depending on the depth of the tragedy and the mindset of the sufferer. We learn more about ourselves through